Hello friends, by now you must have used ChatGPT which is a bot developed by OpenAI and is driven by artificial intelligence. It allows you to have human-like conversations and much more. In this video, we'll talk about how a Spring Boot application can interact with ChatGPT using REST APIs. So let's get started. This is the official API reference documentation from OpenAI.com. As you can see, it says you can interact with the API through HTTP requests from any programming language. Scrolling down, we have the authentication section. For authentication, the open API uses API keys. For that, we'll have to visit this site API keys, log in with your account and create a new API key. Since I already have a API key created, you are seeing this entry here. But if you are logging in for the first time, you'll see this create new secret key button only. Now click on create new secret key and optionally provide a name for your secret and then click create secret key. That should generate the API key for you and it will start with something like SK dash and then a bunch of alphanumeric characters. This is definitely not the complete key for security reasons, but once you generate your key, you'll be able to see the complete API key. So copy that uh, for reference because we'll need that later. Also note that the API key is a secret just like any of your other passwords. So please do not share it with others or expose it by committing into a source code. Now any request that you make to these APIs need to include the API key in the authorization HTTP header as follows. So authorization is the HTTP header key and the value is bearer space the API key that you just generated. Now before we dive into details of the APIs, let's understand the models that drive the OpenAI APIs. So this is the official documentation page which lists all the models. Starting with GPT-4 and GPT-3.5 which can understand as well as generate natural language or code. This allows them to have human-like conversations and much more depending on what the query the user has. Now there are other models as well which can generate and edit images. There's another model which can convert audio into text. There's another model which can convert text into numerical forms, so on and so forth. But for this demo, we'll restrict ourselves to GPT-3.5. That's because GPT-4 is still limited beta and it has been opened only to select folks who have been granted access. Otherwise, you'll have to get into a long wait list to get access to it. So if we click on GPT-3.5, it takes to different versions that this model supports. So we'll be using the latest one, which is GPT-3.5-Turbo. Now let's take a look at the API. For this demo, we'll be taking a look at the chat completions API, which is given a list of messages describing a conversation, the model will return a response. Now here's the URL for the API. It's a post API and it creates a model response for a given chat conversation. Now coming down to request body, the parameter it needs is model, which has to be one of the models that we just saw. Next is the messages. One of the attributes of the messages is role, which can be one of system, user or assistant. Now, since we are calling the API, we'll be using user. Next is the content, which is the query that we want to submit to the API. Note that these are the required attributes that the API needs. Now, scrolling down, there are a bunch of optional attributes, which can also be passed to the API. For this demo, I'll be skipping these optional attributes, but you are free to try it out and give it a shot. Do let me know in the comments how it goes and how you use these optional parameters to tune your query and the response. On the right hand side, they have given sample parameters and sample response. So one of the sample parameters is the model used is GPT 3.5-Turbo, which we'll be using as well. In the messages, the role is user and the content is hello, which is nothing but we are posting the API saying a hello. As a response, the bot gave a bunch of attributes like ID, object created, 
timestamp, etc. The main thing is the choices block, which has the message. Here, the role is set to be assistant. This is because this is the response we got back from the bot. And the content it says is, hello there, how may I assist you today? So this is the bot responding to our query or rather the message hello. Now this was a sample parameter and response. Now actually let's get to the code and see how we can pass actual request to the API. So let's dive into the code. I have a sample Spring Boot project here named chat GPT demo. So let's take a look at the POM file. So it's a Spring Boot application using version 3.1.0. If we take a look at the dependencies, it has a dependency on Spring Boot starter web and the Lombok uh, for generating the getter, setters and the constructors. This is the standard uh, Spring Boot starter test for JUnits. Going into SRC main Java, chat DPT demo application is the main uh, application class. Then there are a set of uh, models uh, which are nothing but the DTOs uh, for calling the APIs. First is the chat GPT requests. Now let's quickly go back to the page where they had the request and response. So if you see the parameters, uh, it needs two parameters, model and the messages. So the chat GPT request also has two attributes, model and messages. Messages are basically a list of message where each message can have a role and content as uh, described on this page so here is the role and then the content and there can be multiple message within this parameters and that's why it's a list of message here now if we take a look at the response that the bot returned uh, the main thing we are interested in the choices uh, attribute that it responds so if we have a model called chat GPT response, which, not, which is nothing but, which has nothing but a list of choice attribute. And if we open up the choice class, it has index and message, which is what we see here under choices, we see index and the message. And uh, the content is the one within the message that we are interested in, um, that the bot would be responding us. So those were the uh, DTOs or the models. Let's take a look at the controller here. We have a chat GPT controller class, which is nothing but a REST controller. Uh, and we are exposing it over, a, over the URL slash API slash V1. It has a method named ask, which is at a request mapping of slash ask. So if we want to invoke this API, uh, we'll have to in the URL call slash API slash v1 slash ask. It accepts a request parameter, which is a string, which is nothing but the query we want to post to the chatbot. And it needs uh, three different values. One is the chat GPT model itself. The next is the API URL, which we'll be hitting. And the last one is the API key, which is required for authentication. The method will go ahead and create the chat GPT request. Then it will create new HTTP headers, uh, the authorization header and add the bearer space, the API key for the authentication stuff. Then it will go ahead and call the API using these request object. And then it will get a response back. Now remember that within the response we had choices and then within that message and then finally the content. This is what we are interested in. This is the string that the chat GPT would have returned us. Now where do these three attributes get its values from right? So, so these are the placeholders where the key is chat GPT dot model chat GPT dot API dot URL and chat GPT dot API dot key. So these are specified in our application.yaml. So let's go to resources and application.yaml. So here if you see we have chat GPT dot model as GPT dash 3.5 dash turbo. The chat GPT dot API dot URL is nothing but the URL we saw on the API reference documentation. And the key is the API key which you will be using for your account. So here it says replace with your API key. So whatever API key you had generated, you would ideally copy it here and paste it. 
okay so with these changes let's try to run this application so i'll click on this green button at the top to start running the application so the application has started running here it says tomcat started on port 8080 so let's go to the browser and try to hit the api so on the new tab when i hit this api using localhost 8080 slash api slash v1 slash ask and the query as hello the response that i get is hello how can i assist you today this is the bot responding to the query hello now let's try another url so the next url i'm going to hit is with the query how far is the moon from earth uh, the spaces i have encoded using percent 20 so let's hit this and see what the response is the response that the chatbot gave is the average distance from the moon to earth is about 238.855 miles which is about 384400 uh, kilometers the next query that I'm going to try is uh, how many planets are there in our solar system so let's see what the bot responds so when I hit that API so the response that the bot gave is there are eight planets on our solar system Mercury Venus Earth Mars Jupiter Saturn Uranus and Neptune so you see through API we are actually interacting with the chatbot uh, and depending on what the query you submit it will respond uh, back with the response accordingly so that's how we could interact with the api as i said earlier this is not the only api that the chatbot can have as you see on this page there are other apis as well like editing images audio files etc etc so do try these and let me know in the comment section how it goes so that's all i had to cover as part of this video hope you enjoyed and liked the video thanks for watching